Hello from Slide Nerd and hello from Weaves. What's up folks? In this video, I'm gonna talk about this image which you see on the left side which has meme titles, descriptions and some images. How to make a list view like this. Let's go ahead and start. Alright, so what are the four steps to create a list view? The one which you saw in the last slide. Step 1. Prepare the data sources. Take those images, take those titles, take those descriptions and merge them, right? Step 2. Define the appearance of a single row in XML. Now if you guys remember, a list view is not a simple view, it's actually a container view. It takes other views inside it. So each of those single rows that you see is actually a separate view with a lot of components inside. So you have to define how one of those single rows is going to appear inside a separate XML file. Step 3. Create a custom adapter that maps the data from the data source to a single row. Now again, the data source can be anything. It can be a simple array. It can be a strings.xml file. It can be a database cursor, anything, right? And you need to put that data inside specific views inside your single row. Now at this point, if you guys are a bit unclear about what I'm talking about, don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna show you everything in action. Step four, decide what happens when the user clicks on an item. Now remember, it depends on you whether you wanna handle events or not. Now I have shown you how to handle events too many times. So in this video, I'm not gonna go into that part and waste your time. I'm gonna go specifically into what is important for creating that structure which you saw above in the last slide. Step one, prepare the data sources. All right, so what are those data sources that you need? Well, you need images, you need titles, which is nothing but a string, right? And then you need descriptions. So if you see descriptions, you can have them inside your strings.xml, inside a string array. Same way you can place images inside a drawable folder, inside your res. For the titles again, you can have them inside a string array. So if you see, you have this uh, image over here, which is nothing but those images inside the drawable folder. You have this description uh, title which says Mimi1, which is nothing but from the string array inside your strings.xml. Same way with your description. So if you see your string array, it looks something like this inside your uh, strings.xml file. You create a string array, give it a name, put the items inside that contain the text, and well, simply use them inside your app. Alright, step two. Define the appearance of a single row. Now if you guys take a look, this is your single row, alright? If you see this carefully, you have this image view over here, which represents this image. You have a text view here that represents this Mimi one. Of course, it has a big font size. And then you have another text view which represents your description. So you need to create this structure inside an XML file. For the image view, I'm going to probably take a size of 48 by 48. I'm going to make sure that all those images, these images are 48 by 48 in size. All right. So next step, step three, create a custom adapter. Now this custom adapter is the one who is going to be responsible for taking the data from those places which you define and putting them inside the appearance for a single row which remember is that separate xml file i was talking about so there are four steps or three steps involved in this create class that extends array adapter for our case we are going to extend the array adapter now your array adapter has a few set of constructors you need to override one of those constructors compulsorily so again, we are going to go ahead and discuss which constructor it is going to be and what makes the best sense. Then step three, override the get view method. Now this get view method is the one responsible for taking the data and putting them inside the view which you gave it and actually creating that single row which you want. All right. So the part about extending the array adapter is pretty simple. Let's focus on the constructors that I was talking about. So here, I'm going to use this constructor, which is array adapter, context, context, int resource, which is the name of the layout file, which defines the single row appearance. Text view resource ID is the ID of the text view inside which you want to put the data contained by the string array. So here in our case, well, actually our case is a little tricky. So if you see the resource, the resource is going to have this XML file which contains all these things inside all right the image view the text view one text view two the problem is with these two parameters what we need is we need to map one of the text views to one of the data sources the problem with us is we have two text views and we have two data sources one of them is the titles and the other one is the descriptions so we have two options we can either have r.id.text view one which is our first text view and put the titles string array inside that 
over here inside the constructor or we can have the text view too and map that to the description uh, string array one of these has to be done if you don't do either of these you won't see anything on the list view I've tried it out and that's why I'm saying that so let's discuss a little about how your custom adapter is going to work so here you have your empty list view at the time when it's just created now what happens for each row when the first row is to be shown to the user the get view method is called and this is the method which actually creates this row which you see over here again the second row is to be created and shown to the user get view method is called the third row is to be shown get view is called and so on so let's actually see how to use the get view but before we go into that let's take a look at what these numbers mean 0 1 2 as you guys can notice very simply it's the position 0 1 2 3 4 and so on view convert the second parameter don't worry about that right now we will talk about it when I show you object recycling using something uh, to improvise uh, to optimize your list view performance the third parameter view group parent is nothing but a reference to the list view so that you can use it in some way inside the get view method if you want so let's go and discuss how you can use the get view method alright so you have your single row dot xml file which contains a relative layout which is the root inside that you have an image view a text view 1 a text view 2 containing the descriptions right so here the method looks something like this view get view int position remember it gives you 0 1 2 3 and so on for each position of the row convert view which I told don't worry about this right now view group parent it is nothing but a reference to the list view so here the first step you need to do is convert this XML into a Java object now why would you do that because you see we need we, we have something like this which has an image view text view 1 text view 2 and all we need to actually put the image inside the image view set the title Mimi 1 inside this text view 1 and set the description saying this is a description blah 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 inside our text view 2 so for doing all this we need references to text view 1 text view 2 and this image view and for that we need that object in the Java form so the first step you need to do is inflator if you guys remember the layout inflator video which I discussed about you can go ahead and check it out in my playlist where I've shown you how to work how the layout inflator works again here I've set inflator dot inflate r dot layout dot single row which is this XML file alright I've specified the parent which is nothing but the list view and I've specified a false parameter over here now remember I've shown you exactly how this inflate method works in the video about layout inflator so if you're not clear with this part go ahead and check it out I will also show you what happens when you put true over here instead of false and how the behavior changes with that in a separate video but for now let's just forget about the statement much then at this point your V contains the root view of the single row dot XML now what is the root view well it's the relative layout over here this is the root and that is what your V object contains so using that V object fill the values for each view to create your completed row that means find the image views uh, exact drawable set the image views image resource to be that drawable find this text view set text equals to the title and set description equals to that right and then at that point after you do those three value setting things this is what you see you have your image set over here in place of the image view you have the Mimi one set for the title and you have the description one set for the text view two and this is what you return from your get view method as you guys can see it is public view get view this view object is this entire thing that you return to the user or the list view and the list view is simply gonna keep building this and that's how you see your completed list view with images so now I have shown you guys how it works in the next video I'm gonna go inside Android studio and actually make this work alright so if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel comment let me know your thoughts I would love to hear from you guys thanks for watching I'll catch you guys later have a nice day